Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to demo the new backdrop creator that's found in the current beta version of Adobe Photoshop. If you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, you could download the beta version of Photoshop. The beta version often will have new features not found in the current version, but it may run a little slow or it may be a bit buggy, but you're welcome to download it and try it out. To download it, open up the Creative Cloud app on your computer. Go to the second tab from the left, the Apps tab, and then in the left-hand column, scroll down to Beta Apps. And you can see here that there are a number of different apps in Beta that you could download, including Adobe Photoshop. Just download it. You can see I already downloaded it. Install it. And you don't have to worry about it replacing the current version of Photoshop on your computer. It will run in tandem with the current version. So just in case the beta version is buggy and it's running slow and it crashes a lot or anything like that, you don't have to worry about it disrupting your workflow because you still have the original version on your computer. Once it's downloaded, open it up and open an image up into it that you want to create a backdrop for, like this image. The first thing you need to do after you open the image up into the beta version of Photoshop is select the background. Now there's a number of different ways you could do that. And the way I prefer to do it is select the subject and then invert the selection so that everything but the subject is selected. That would be the background. Now with this beta version, you do have this little toolbar down here at the bottom. You can see it has select subject. I could click right there. Another way you could do it in the more conventional way in the way that I've always selected subjects, at least in recent history is I get any of the selection tools by hitting the W key on my keyboard. And when you do, you'll get any of these three selection tools, object selection, quick selection, and magic wand tool. It doesn't matter which one you get, just hit the W key on your keyboard and you'll have a select subject button up here. It does the same exact thing as that select subject at the bottom, except here there's this tiny little drop down, and you could see that you could have your device that's your computer do the selection, or you could have the image sent up to the cloud and have Adobe's computers create the selection. And Adobe's computers are much more powerful and will do a better job usually. So that's why I prefer then to do it this way. So I could click cloud and then select the subject. And it takes a little longer this way. And of course you need an active internet connection for it to work. And you can see though that I have the selection of the model. Next, I wanna make sure the selection is a good selection. So I'm going to make sure that it's masked properly. I'm going to click select and mask. When you do, you'll be opened up here. Now there's a number of different views. If you go over on the far right, you can see right now that I'm in this on black view and it's at hundred percent, but there's a, been a bug in Photoshop for like several years that when you use the on black view and the opacity is at hundred, it shows it at 50 and you just have to touch the slider to get it to go to hundred. But you can see that her hair isn't perfectly selected. So what I'll do is I'll just click on refine hair and like that. And it took care of her hair pretty much. I think that's good. Now there is maybe a little spot in here. So what I could do is get the second brush from the top. This is the refine edge brush. And I'll just leave it on plus. It doesn't really matter. And I'll just come in here and I'll brush these areas in here by her hair that aren't as selected as well. Like this. And that's not too bad. Maybe over here a little bit too. All right, for the sake of this video and this demonstration, I'm going to say that is good enough. Now, I mentioned that we have to select the background, not the model. Uh, we, so we have the model selected, so I need to invert this. And the easiest way to do that is just click this little button over here on the right, invert. Now you can see that the background is selected, not the model. So we're good to go. We're going to click OK. So now we have a selection of the background. Now the next step is to create our backdrop. And to do that, we're going to go up to filter and then down to neural filters. Now you may find that neural filters will be grayed out in some instances when you try to use it. If that's the case, all you need to do is go over to the background here where it says background, there's a little lock. Just click on that lock and unlock it. Now in this case, it didn't matter because it wasn't grayed out, but that's how you would get around that. Then click on Neural Filters, and you'll see that the model is missing. Don't worry about that. And if you go over here under the Creative section, you can see there's a Backdrop Creator, and you can see the Creator, and it's in Beta. 
Now you can see up here, it's defaulting to skin smoothing and it's asking me or prompting me to download the tools needed to smooth a person's skin. The same thing will happen when you first use background creator. When you click on it, there'll be a download button there. So download it. You can see I already did. I'm going to turn it on. Now, I don't think this uses actual AI, but what you would do, you would enter a text, a text prompt, and then it will match a backdrop for your text prompt. But I don't think it uses AI. I think it just uses a database of images and matches an image for your text prompt. And you can see that it shows a sample gold and black paint swirling. And I could then click create. It will create 85 different varieties, but it'll only show you three of them. And I'll show you that in a moment. Or you could, I don't like gold and black paint swirling, so I could just override that and type something myself. Or I could click on popular prompts and I could see what other people are picking or what Adobe kind of set up here. And you could see there's indigo leaf textures and different things. And let's just for the fun of it, like, I don't know, let's pick a detailed marble with gold and we'll click create. So that is one that someone else or Adobe created. I think Adobe because it says Adobe. And you can see that it's showing three of them. Let me just close this down. It's going to create them. Then once it creates them, now it's actually creating 85. That's why it took so long, but it's only going to show you three. And let's say you just like the style of one, like I like this one. Well, you could see more in that style by clicking here, and then it will show you three more that are more like that one that you just uh, clicked on. So it's going to show you three more. So it just takes a while. It's going to find those three, put those there. There's three more that are more in that style. And again, you could then click on that right-hand corner and get three more and three more and three more, of course. So this is this marble one, and that was using one of their popular prompts. What if you want to create your own? Now, I was just watching like a bunch of science fiction movies lately, so why don't we override this and write our own? I'm going to go uh, a sci-fi tunnel. All right, so just something like a sci-fi tunnel, and I'm going to click Create. All right, and see what this comes up with. So this is something that wasn't in popular prompts at all. This is something that I just made up on the spot. Uh, mainly because I was watching science fiction. But you can see there's some samples here. And again, it, it has that you could just pick one or you could just click this little icon that's in the lower right-hand corner and get more like this. Let's get more like that. So it's going to get some more similar ones. So you can keep doing this. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep coming up with more and more. And you haven't really replaced anything yet. But let it do this. And let's just say we're going to stop here. And let's say now I like this one, so I'm going to click on it, and it has a check mark in the left-hand corner. You can see it put it in there. Uh, let's say I like this one. See, it puts a check mark there as well. Let's say I like that one. And let's just, for the sake of argument and completeness, say I like this one, and I like this one. So what it did now when I clicked on them is it created high-definition versions of that backdrop when I clicked on them and it put check marks on all of them. Now, kind of implies that you could uncheck one, but you can't. You click on it and you really can't uncheck it, at least not yet in the beta version, but that's what it seems to be. So I have all these different ones checked. I have one, two, three, four, four different ones. Let's pick a fifth one just for fun. Yeah. All right, so we have five different backdrops checked. Let's just output these to a new layer group. Now, don't worry, the model's still not there, I know, but don't worry, we'll click OK. Now we have it. Now, to bring the model back, all you need to do is at this point, immediately with those marching ants still there, click on a layer mask. And you can see there's the model standing in front of this tunnel. What if you want to see a different one? Remember, we clicked on, was it six different ones? So we'll just turn a different one on and turn the one above it off. So there's that one. Turn this off again and click on another one. Turn that off, click on another one. Turn that off, click on another one. Turn that off, click on another one. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, I think it's pretty cool. Now, of course, if one is on top, you don't have to turn the one off below it. It will just go right on top of it like that. So that's that. Now, you're, you could modify these. You could um, do different um, adjustment layers to them. Like if I want to make this 
uh, this tunnel. Let's say I like this one, but it's like a little bit too dark and I want to make it brighter. So I could go to and add a um, curves adjustment layer to it, let's say. And then I could go right here and I could brighten it up like that and bring up the shadows, something like that. So I can make the tunnel brighter like that. So you could add these uh, curves in this case to make it brighter. And it's because it's inside of this group, which is this folder, it's only going to affect what is in that folder directly below it. It's not going to affect the model, which is outside of the folder. So it's not affecting her at all. So that is the new backdrop creator that's creator that's found in the beta version of Photoshop. I hope this helps you create some cool stuff for your images. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.